So I'm Kang Taeyong and I'm the founder of Project Pascal. And uh, I'm James and I'm the co-founder of Project Pascal. Okay, uh, so I'll start with the forum now. So um, welcome to the Pascal Forum on Innovation for a Sustainable and Resilient Future. I'm honored to introduce our distinguished guest today, Professor Wong Po Kam, an Emeritus Professor at NUS. With his extensive experience and expertise in technological entrepreneurship and innovation, Professor Wong has played a significant role in shaping the landscape of entrepreneurship education and fostering innovation ecosystems across various countries. So welcome, Professor Wong. Okay. So let us begin our conversation with the first topic, which is on technology innovations for overcoming challenges and driving positive change. Professor Wong, your experience spans across various countries and you've witnessed the transformative power of technology in improving productivity and transcending conventional limitations. Could you share some key strategies and initiatives that nations can adopt to enhance their presence on a world stage in terms of technological advancements and entrepreneurship? Yeah. Well, I guess um, your interest is basically also on Southeast Asia, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Southeast Asia as a whole is basically part of what we call the Global South, which is different from the advanced Western nations. Uh, so in a sense, the challenges that these economies face are somewhat different from those of the advanced country. Huh? I mean, Singapore is a bit of a unique situation. We are in Southeast Asia, but we are quite sort of close to the advanced country, including Korea, Japan, huh? uh, in terms of the <coughs> level of income and so on. But if you look at Southeast Asia as a whole, the innovation challenges are different from those of the advanced country in the sense that we, they, these economies still have very large number of rural population of lower income. And so when one talk about innovation, one need to think about how can innovation help the masses of people in the global south and in Southeast Asia. So you would think about uh, what are the issues that they face, right? So issues like affordable challenges that are perhaps somewhat common with what they are saying. So in a sense, if you can develop innovation for these uh, economies in Southeast Asia, it's likely that you can then, with some adaptation, translate them to the other global sum. So therefore, in that sense, I think the biggest opportunity for innovation uh, even for Singapore, it would be to uh, look at how innovation can actually serve these large market in the global south. You can even say that um, China, to some extent, is still part of this global south because right over the last 20 years, China has also invested significantly in innovation to actually help uplift the poor. So for me, the focus, if you think about the biggest challenge and opportunity, will be to how to have innovation to address these markets. Uh, and of course, I talk about rural population, but also these countries also faced with uh, mega cities that had huge challenges as well, you know, urban infrastructure and so on. You, know, you look at Jakarta, you look at Bangkok, you look at the mega cities. So again, innovation that can help address the um, uh, mobility, um, can help improve the sort of um, living conditions, uh, access to maybe clean water or whatever in these uh, mega mega cities. Uh, again, that would be a focus I would look at. To some extent, I would actually argue that Singapore for a long time, the government had been focusing on addressing uh, the innovation challenge in the advanced country. Right? You look at the R and D spending that uh, you know that we spent a lot of is looking at the problem of the advanced country. I mean, obviously there is a market opportunity there, but to me, I think a bigger opportunity is to look at these markets. But the challenge to address these other Southeast Asian and the global South market is that many of our innovators, including many of our students, we, uh, we live in a modern, advanced city, Singapore. You know, we don't have first-hand, or at least your current generation, don't have first-hand knowledge and understanding of the problem and challenges that the rural farmer, the, the, right, uh, the, the mega city urban uh, slum dweller face. So 
and you have no idea of the kind of agricultural you know, problem, challenges that uh, this economy had. So it's harder for researchers here in Singapore to try and address this problem. So, that, so that's why I feel that one of the ways we could, in terms of education, uh, is to try and encourage more of our students to um, spend some time in the, our neighbouring country, spend more time in the global south, so that we can have a deeper understanding of the challenges that they face. And, and to me, the, a lot of these problems actually are solvable with technology that is already available. It's a question of adapting them and developing workable solutions that are low cost and affordable. So we are not talking about you know, really major breakthrough science that is required. It does require uh, understanding the problem and uh, accepting the solution to solve these problems. So therefore, actually, the challenges is not as great as people feel. Uh, and I always think that this is where uh, you know, the, the biggest impact can be made if we do a lot more adaptation. Like, for instance, we talk about IoT, right? You know, IoT had major application in agriculture. Uh, and so if you, and you can be make it low cost enough that it, it, it can actually you know, have a lot of impact. IOT also have a you know, major impact on healthcare in rural area, right, to uh, remote monitoring and so on. Right? So, I guess speaking to, I mean, you are a student in uh, Singapore and uh, I mean, I would certainly encourage you to think about looking at the you know, innovation opportunities and challenges in Southeast Asia and by extension of the global south as one important focus. Yeah, I really find it interesting that uh, you feel that we should like actually, like uh, students or like researchers in like more developed countries should like go to like less developed regions in perhaps Southeast Asia to actually understand the situation and like the plights there in order to adapt the existing technologies to yeah. solve the problems there. So um, could you also share some significant shifts and takeaways that you've, you've observed in your research on technological entrepreneurship in Southeast Asia over the years? Well, as I said, the, um, challenge is not so much to take breakthrough science, right, uh, but it more take as available technology, but combined with a knowledge and understanding of how to commercialize them in the context of the Southeast Asian market where, for example, cost is a key issue, right? Many innovation are too high cost for the advanced country. So can we develop more low cost solution? And then secondly, uh, you also need to have uh, sort of uh, the innovation that is um, more adapted to the local culture, right? And a lot of it is just based on your deep or good understanding of the cultural norms and whatever in your society. So I give you a great example, right? Uh, we all know that uh, uh, Uber first started this right uh, ride hailing platform, right? And then they expanded globally. When they first went came to Indonesia some years back, they were also trying to do what they did in the US, which is to allow people right with a four wheeler car. So Gojek now it's called Go, right? They took the same idea, but they understand the Ind Indonesian society better. So they know that in uh, you know, highly traffic jam, uh, Jakarta, you know, a car will get jammed. So the first one they focus is on is on two wheelers, right, which go much faster. And secondly, they know that in a society where there's a very large Islamic population, uh, you have to be mindful that the women traveler, right, uh, need to be taken by a women driver, right? I mean, these are not rocket science, just common sense understanding that. And therefore, they introduced, first to introduce two, two wheeler, first to introduce a service where women rider can get a ride from a, a women driver, right? Mm -hmm. So it is by doing this, they are able to uh, penetrate much faster, right? I mean, so, uh, and also they knew that uh, in order for the uh, driver, for the, even the two wheeler, whatever, to be afford to use a platform, they need to have a smartphone, and some of them cannot afford a smartphone, so they introduce a, a company business model where they lend money to the, right, 
to the driver so that they can have a smartphone and then they repay back you know, from the earning. You know. So this example illustrates that a lot of times the innovation to succeed is not the technology. It is your understanding of the, you know, what works best in your local environment and also come up with a business model that somehow make it work, right? So, and I think a lot of uh, such opportunity abound in, the, in Southeast Asia is waiting for the um, entrepreneur who can take the technology that is already available and adapt it to you know, the local environment context. So, for example, there was a successful Indonesian entrepreneur, right? He came from a, a small aquaculture farm family. So he uh, took the, te the technology IoT, you know, instead, instead of uh, hiring a worker to uh, feed the fish, right, he, uh, he, had a, he developed a simple uh, machine that a first year engineering student can do that is controlled by uh, a sensor, an audio sensor that dip into the water. The, the audio sensor will, will, will detect when the fish is hungry. When the fish is hungry, then it will release the food. When the fish become not so hungry, it stop. So that it first it reduce wastage, and it reduce extra pollution to the to the pond, and also it reduce the dependent on labor. So the audio sensor technology is uh, you know already off the shelf. So it's a matter of fine tuning an algorithm to be able to detect fish sound that is happening, and apparently different species of fish emit different sound, right? But that's, I mean, you know, uh, even uh, I think, uh, you know, A-level student will be able to figure that out, right? So it's a simple application that will help improve productivity and reduce. So if we need to multiply many more of such, then the impact will be big, you know. Um, and I do believe that uh, the opportunities are tremendous you know, for that kind of, of innovation you know. and I believe that we need to go through these and I also want to argue that um, a lot of these innovation may not be you know they, they are uh, involve a fair bit of imitation adaptation right so as I said right I mean the Gojek did not invent the right hearing platform but you adapt it and there is no shame in adapting because uh, the value add is in right you uh, customizing the technology to fit a local needs, and I think that that is where the I think the opportunities are. I believe that m if if more students from the region are being educated to this, they can then do more such innovation, and then if you can give them more support to do this like actual projects, you know, um, in the university or to, to do this. I think that, that the impact will be uh, quite big. And that's why I think education play a role to empower and also to inspire them to think that they can actually do it. You don't need to get a PhD, you know, to solve quite a few. Of course, there are problems that require much deeper technology, but there's tremendous amount that even a first year, second year engineering student can solve. Uh, provided they have the right mindset, uh, understanding the link between innovation and business, and also support. You know, because you do need to invest in some money to do all this development and so on. And that's where university incubation support and other forms of support comes in. Yeah. All right, thank you, Professor Wong. I find it really interesting how, like, um, you talk about entrepreneurship requiring so much creativity and also so much, um, I guess, understanding of the culture as well as the background for you to be able to innovate. And it's not really just about like technology or about your advanced ideas or like knowledge. All right, so um, that's the most on. Go Pesco! Go Pesco! Go Pesco.